And it was a dark, windy night. I was sitting in the middle of Thar Desert in Rajasthan, surrounded by friends, strangers who became friends. And then we're having the best of conversations. We are talking about psychedelic music. And then next thing I know, we were eulogizing about people we loved. But one thing was common between all of us. That was that we were there to have a glimpse of the universe in its natural form. We wanted to have a slice of heaven, which was riddled with stars. A very good afternoon to all the Toastmasters here, and the guests, and the potential Toastmasters. <laughs> well, can you imagine a sky like that every day in your life? A sky filled with stars, which provides you with a window to the universe that you would like to see. But instead of that star, uh, that sky, you end up seeing something like this. <laughs> right? What you are supposed to see is something which is like this. Now can anyone here tell me the reason? Pollution. Light pollution. Light pollution. Thank you so much. Well, uh, there are different levels of light pollution. What you saw here was level 8, which is what you see in everyday life in Bangalore, in the most urban city. This is something that you can see in Spiti Valley. And what we are trying to achieve is not a, a, a one, probably <coughs> maybe a three or five will also show us how beautiful our sky is. Now what exactly is sky, uh, light pollution? It is the excessive or inappropriate use of artificial lights. And it consists of four components. The first component being the sky blue. Now what is sky blue? What does sky glow mean? Uh, when the buildings have lights on them, the light escapes those buildings or through the light, uh, through the electric bulbs. And the water molecules in the sky traps it and it reflects back to Earth, which results in the obstruction of the sky above and you can't see the stars. The second one is light trespass. Uh, can you tell me what is wrong with this whole uh, picture? Now see, nobody has drawn that person. <laughs> that, that's one. <laughs> so, so the street lights are supposed to, <laughs> are supposed to concentrate the light downwards. You're not supposed to put it the light here. It is for pedestrians to walk. That is to help them, not the thief to come inside your room. So whole purpose of street light is defeated here because it goes up to the sky and not it's not directed downwards. That's called light trespassing. It trespasses into territories it's not supposed to. A glare. We all know that idiot, for lack of better word, <laughs> who uses very harsh light when they're uh, using their vehicles. This affects the vision of the person who is coming from the other side. That's also part of light pollution, by the way. Now, you might ask me a question. Uh, why does it matter to me, right? Like, I do not want study, uh, stars in the sky. I do not look at the sky every day. So how does it affect me? I'm not an astronomer, neither am I a stargazer. Then why should I even care about this? Uh, well, there are these, the research has showed in the past that it has affected our environment to a large extent and also human health. Now, some of the effects, the ill effects of light pollution has been uh, First one, the most important one, is to the environment around us. Humans have had the worst, eff uh, humans have used the worst way to destroy the environment and this has been one of them because the sea turtles, when they hatch, the, uh, the hatchlings, for them to move inside the sea, what happens is they uh, see the moon as, the, uh, as a way to go inside the sea. That's the natural light. When you put an artificial light in the area, the sea turtles mistake that as the light and they go in the opposite direction, which results in them being killed. That happens a lot, which is why they are on the verge of extinction. Now the second one is, uh, this is a combination of building uh, skyscrapers and also uh, lights. So when the birds are flying in the sky, they, they see the, their vision is impaired when they see these bright lights. 
and what happens is they go collide with these buildings and die every day in cities like toronto and uh, big cities like even bangalore there are a lot of birds which are being killed because of this reason and the next one is for us humans how humans are affected well we have something called as circadian rhythm which differentiates light day and night now you are supposed to sleep at night and wake up in the morning and this is how a healthy person functions if you do it in a wrong way uh, uh, because of light pollution you are not able to do this as it affects your sleep and not only that that even light pollution is related to is is linked to depression sleep disorders and also breast cancer now what can you do uh, what's your bit in preventing this light pollution uh, one is you might have seen during festivals or any kind of celebration we have excessive lights which is put out in uh, in front of our houses what you can do is you can reduce it if not completely uh, stop using it so or you can use natural candles or uh, diyas as we use it in indian society the second one is you have to use lamps which is which are covered which directs downwards and not something like this it has to be covered and directed downwards a third one is it's very simple all of us can do it just don't use the light when not in use switch it off and it saves money also and it saves our environment win win now uh, a very famous person once said that uh, our future generation shouldn't remember us with contempt but they should remember us with gratitude we should leave the earth that we got in the same fashion it was handed over to us and not how we got through with it we it's time that we stop pretending that the airplanes in the night sky are shooting stars <laughs> and started asking ourselves the question that is this the kind of earth you want to leave for your children because even they deserve this a slice of heaven printed with stars thank you so much for the